Well, hello, Salem. I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett, and here with your December update on the great things happening at the city of Salem. Uh, let's start with the new spin on our annual volunteer recognition awards. We haven't been able to do a formal in-person ceremony, but we know it's still very important to recognize and thank the really many residents who volunteer and give the gift of their time and talent to this community. So in lieu of the in-person event, we've been doing personal presentations of the awards and recording it for everyone to view. The recording is then featured during a special segment of each city council meeting. And if you'd like to know who has been recognized so far or who has already received an award for their involvement, be sure to find the highlights on the City of Salem YouTube channel. And speaking of community involvement, don't forget that we have many city boards and commissions that could use your help. For example, there are vacancies on the Public Art Commission, a youth position on the Salem Human Rights Commission, and we could use some residents on the Center 50 Plus Advisory Commission. We'd appreciate you considering these important opportunities to give back to your community you can find more information using the web address that appears on your screen. Lastly, if you missed it, last month the City of Salem released its annual community report which explores the progress of the various priority issues in our city. The report reviews the efforts over the past year to address the strategic, strategic priorities of building great neighborhoods, creating community resilience, and more. Find the report on the City of Salem website listed below. Now this month, I have the real pleasure of welcoming Salem Health President and CEO, Cheryl nestor Wolf. Cheryl was a guest back in May 2020 to answer our COVID pandemic related questions. I'm glad she's back today to give us an update and also tell us all about how Salem Health continues to care for our community after 125 years of service. Well, Cheryl, welcome back and happy 20, 125th <laughs> anniversary you. to you and really that great staff at Salem Hospital. Uh, that must be exciting. 125 years is a huge uh, mark to hit, I think. H how's it going over there? Um, well, uh, I would say the last two years has made the 123 years <laughs> look easy. That's, yeah, I, I bet. I bet. That's yeah. that's really probably the first question I need to ask is mm -hmm. is how is it? Uh, you know, there are are so many stories that tend to come in through the national news uh, out of Portland, but it's really getting a feel for what's happening in Salem in terms of the impact of COVID on the hospital and your ability to provide service to the broader. Uh, needs of the community? Uh, well, uh, quite honestly, it's been difficult. Yeah. And uh, even today, we have 54 patients in the hospital that are COVID positive, um, that are too sick to be home. Uh, and luckily, fewer in our ICU. At our peak, we had 110 in the hospital uh, back in August. How many and are in ICU now? Uh, right now, there's six, six, okay. and only two were ventilated, as opposed to what Great. we were seeing during the the huge surge of 25, and the majority of them being ventilated. Um, we still, um, unfortunately, are outstripping the rest of the state in the number of positive cases in here the in, hospital mm -hmm. here in Marion yeah. County. Yeah, so we it's not we, we don't want to be number one, but we continue to to really uh, demonstrate. Uh, just a lot of admissions, and again, these are people that are really, really sick and yeah. just have no choice but to come into the hospital. So it's equivalent for us of about two nursing units uh, wow. of COVID patients. Our units are about 30. We've been fluctuating uh, into the 60s and uh, low 50s for the past several weeks. and. Um, largely unvaccinated again. Um, is that is people. that the population that's arriving? 
Yeah, about 25% are breakthrough. Those are people that have been fully vaccinated. 75% uh, are unvaccinated. And um, that just kind of mirrors the national and the state data in terms of the percentages. So uh, we just continue to see large volumes. Uh, it really, it's a, it's a very difficult disease to treat. Our staff are beyond exhausted, to be honest I'll with bad. you. Yeah. I'll bet. Do you have, you know, one of the things in listening and watching this, uh, really from the outside, mm -hmm. Is there a treatment protocol in place? It's, it, you hear that debated on all kinds of radio and television and right. in the papers. Is there a treatment protocol? Uh, we do have a good treatment with Regeneron uh, that we okay. use for our patients. And we're treating many patients in the outpatient area that about 85% of those don't ever come into the hospital. So we're able to manage those out in, out in the community effectively by those treatments. Well, that's a tremendous change uh, from it, a couple years it, ago. It really is. And the uh, we established the first uh, treatment center, outpatient treatment center in the state. Uh, really? We did, yeah, we did the re, uh, that, that uh, Regeneron protocol sooner. Um, we made the decision to do that. Um, we had low numbers at first, but with those have continued to grow. And so it's a very active treatment for people, again, to keep people out of the hospital. So they have COVID, they're high risk. Um, their physician refers them to our clinic and then they get that treatment. So it, they come through the clinic to the hospital, mm -hmm. most likely through a referral to get that right. kind of treatment. That's right. Uh, are docs uh, doing that kind of treatment on their own in their own offices out there as well? Is that part of how this larger population gets dealt with? Uh, most of it is done through the clinic. Um, okay. There are, so because of the, it's, it's the, the treatment protocol requires an infusion, although be, that's oh. becoming easier now. We're seeing some other opportunities uh, for giving uh, injections. Um, so there's a continuing, this, this is all evolving work, at, so wow. it continues to evolve, the, but the majority of them are coming through our clinic. How's your staff doing? It sounds like there's training that must be going on. There must be a lot of things going on. There, uh, they, you just went through the question of uh, uh, mandatory vaccination. How, how are things going with your staff? Well, we're 100% compliant uh, to the governor's order. About 91% of our staff are vaccinated. Um, the uh, rest of the staff uh, uh, solicited and were granted religious or medical exceptions, depending on what their particular uh, concerns were. Uh -huh. our, our medical staff are 99.5% wow. vaccinated. So it's pretty amazing um, that we've been able to accomplish this, keep our hospital running. We need all of our staff. No layoffs? Uh, uh, no. Great. No, that's great. <laughs> no, and I didn't do it at the beginning of the, of the pandemic either. Right. So we kept all of our staff and kept them working. And, um, you know, we've been very blessed. We've had National Guard for the past few months. That's right. We'll continue to have National Guard uh, through the end of this year, about 45 of them. Uh, they're in non-clinical roles, but incredibly important to our operations. Uh, given the just the sheer number of peop, of patients we have in the hospital, are, are right you now. comfortable the governor will keep them at your disposal? Is that <laughs> <laughs> well, we're comfortable between now and the end of the December. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've just gotten that information, and about forty five of the guardsmen will stay with us, and we and we need them to be honest. You know, during all of this, you've had this major construction project right. underway over there. How? <laughs> How's that one going? <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's yeah. uh, on time, on budget. Excellent. Uh, pretty amazing given the supply chain disruptions. Yeah. We had a great partner in our construction firm and making sure that we have what we need for the construction. Uh, we should be finished in April. Open. Uh, and open in July. Wow. So uh, every indication is that will happen. So in April, we expect to actually return our emergency room entrance. Uh, to the place where we're mm -hmm. doing all the construction now, and that will be an amazing addition yeah. uh, to the hospital, to the, the entrance to the emergency room, the meditation garden, uh, the new chapel, all funded uh, by our foundation. Oh, fantastic. And uh, just an incredible um, 
experience, I think, for people that are really stressed to be able to get into the emergency room very easily. How, that, that is great. How, uh, how many beds are coming with that? 150 wow. new beds. And if I had them today, we're about a <laughs> You'd year fill short. Them, wouldn't you? Oh, it's pretty. Uh, again, we didn't expect when we started this planning in 2017 right. to have a brand new disease that was going to take up two nursing units. We were building for the future because right. of the growing and aging population in our community. And uh, yes, we need them now. We're over 100% occupied most days in our Do you beds. see another building coming in your future? Uh, in order for us, Building B uh, at some point needs to be decommissioned and taken down because of the age of the facility. Uh, but That's we're the gonna old have hospital. The yeah. old, okay. So we'll have to build another building in order to do that. Um, so yes, our plan right now is in about 10 years to have another building added to the campus. Again, going east away from the neighborhood. Where do you see us in 20 years? How, how, how big will the hospital be? I mean, it's going to, <laughs> you're going to be meeting a population need of what, a half million or 400,000? What are right, you? Right, right. Uh, yeah, and, and of course we service Polk County also. Right. And they're also a growing uh, community in the state. Um, but we, um, we think we'll be around uh, 650 beds uh, at wow. the uh, end of the next 20 years. And currently we're licensed for a little over 500. Fantastic. Uh, are there any other projects that uh, you think folks would be interested in hearing about at the sure. hospital? Yeah, we, um, we have partnered in the community. It's not just about building big buildings on the campus. It's, a pro it's about providing the right level of care for people in our community at the right cost. Uh, so we have built an ambulatory center uh, just adjacent to the campus, and that's with Salem Clinic. Uh, as partners, Willamette Urology and Willamette ENT, and we will open that after the first of the year for outpatient surgeries, again, a lower cost setting. Where will that be? Uh, not... It's at the old North Bank um, building that's just right oh, beside sure. our campus. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've yeah. remodeled it. We've got it all ready to go. We're waiting for accreditation. Oh, okay. Uh, I so didn't that realize we can that. Operate it. Yeah, it's, Great. it's pretty close. Um, we also partnered with Hope Orthopedics uh, and have uh, now purchased property to build a new ambulatory center. Um, because they continued to grow and so we partnered together to build that together and uh, we have uh, actually purchased land uh, over, it's the old country uh, club building over there, um, so we will, uh, country financial, excuse me, that we will be yeah. building on that property. So when you say ambulatory center, that's outpatient? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you can get your surgery done, go home. Uh, go home, it's a lower cost setting, yeah. it's appropriate for many set, uh, surgeries and we still have the hospital for the surgeries that really qu require hospitalization. Well, congratulations Thank on you. dealing with COVID, <laughs> dealing with every other ailment we have here in town that we all go through that we end up in the hospital or need the support of the hospital. And then this, this planned growth is so, I think for all of us, encouraging, uh, particularly for those of us who are aging, that this <laughs> is, that you'll be there for us when the, when the time comes. We so. will, we will be there. I mean, that's what we're here for. And right. uh, you know, our funds go right back into the community to make sure we can take care of the community for the next 125 Great. years. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, You're Cheryl. Welcome. Really appreciate you taking time with me today. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us.